Hi, welcome to V-Discovery. Of the many bloody battles that have ensued over hundreds of years on the fields of Europe, it was a single moment of one man's courage and defiance that led to a flag which may be flown in freedom for the first time in years. Now, after further bloodshed, political fighting and the division of a nation, one of the most important decisions a nation will ever make is fast approaching. On 9 November in the year 2014, a vote in Spain will decide if the proud people of Catalonia gain true independence from Spain. To understand this over time, we must understand the people, their deep cultural strength and their fierce struggles that continue today. The Catalan society is a very complex society. Uh, the question of identity is very much an important part of, of Catalan society and there are, uh, the Catalans identify in lots of different ways. Sometimes identify as Spanish, sometimes identify as Catalans, others identify more as Europeans or citizens of the world. So you get all this sort of combination coming together. Also this struggle for um, recognition of their culture and survival I think is a, is a very fascinating one. Catalonia is part of Spain, which was one of the original colonial empires of an emerging civilization that was struggling for power in the mid-1500s. With the second most spoken language in the world, the Spanish have themselves a rich history, which often conceals their internal conflicts. Today, Catalonia is an autonomous community of Spain, with a population of 7.5 million. It too is steeped in culture, which has been shaped over hundreds of years of tradition. Catalonia's oldest symbol dates back to the early 9th century. According to legend, the coat of arms, as seen on the flag, is the result of Charles the Bold, King of West Francia, dipping his fingers in the blood of Wilfred the Hairy, the first Count of Barcelona, then smearing his four bloody fingers over Wilfred's golden shield after the fight against the Saracens. This created the four red bars over the golden background, exhibiting strong connotations of Catalan's resistance to external domination. Catalonia developed from the 9th to 15th centuries. It was a hub of European and Mediterranean trade. Its language and collective culture evolved and formed identities. Little did Catalonia know that the cultural and political circumstances of the early modern period would soon undo the legacy of the medieval Catalan culture. The War of the Reapers in 1640 saw the Catalan peasants rebel against Philip IV, which lasted for 19 years. Their national anthem takes its name and music from the events of this war. More bloodshed was soon to follow as the war with Spanish succession broke out in 1701. This resulted in Catalonia losing their independence 13 years later, on 11 of September 1714. This date is now known as Catalonia's National Day. In 1716, the Nueva Planta decree abolished Catalan constitutions. Catalan's universities were suppressed an administrative use of language was abolished. War after war followed, with decree after decree weakening the Catalan culture, with the language suffering in particular. 1881 saw the Catalan language banned on legal documents. Soon after, in 1886, it was banned in public meetings and on the phone. Then in 1900, it was banned from theaters. Dictatorship through the 20th century, led by Miguel Primo de Rivera, saw the repression of Catalonia's national dance, the Sardana. Of Catalan cultural expressions compared to, say, Spanish cultural in, uh, in, in, uh, expressions, and I'm simplifying it a little bit here, but the Catalan ones tend to involve groups of people coming together, working together to create something, such as the, the human towers, where everybody has to know where they are in their, their place. The um, Catalan national dance again involves a group of people in, in a circle dancing, holding hands, uh, whereas comparing that to say, I mean, stereotypes again, bullfighting where you've got the individual bullfighter 
um, or flamenco, where you've got um, again, it's the you know certain individuals who who stand out, as opposed to the importance of community in the Catalan situation. Then relief, or so some hoped. The Second Republic in 1931 was a brief moment of freedom until the Generalitat declared Catalonia a state of the Spanish Federal Republic. And war was once again declared. The Franco dictatorship came into play after the civil war from 1937. Yet again, the Catalan culture was repressed with total abolishment of the language, from speaking it to reading it. It was even abolished in education establishments. People who were caught speaking Catalan were detained and beaten, and in some circumstances, even killed. The Franco regime continued. However, workers' protests around 1946 saw the struggles towards independence fire up once again. Once repressed publications in Catalan became more common from the 1950s, with the passing of the Law of Freedom of Expression in 1966. Estic molt contenta del que està passant aquests últims anys perquè crec que molta gent ho tenia a dins però ningú es pensava que, que realment s'obrís a la llum amb tanta força i amb aquests últims anys la veritat és que la societat s'ha conscienciat no només els polítics estan lluitant per això realment crec que és la, la societat la que, la que està empotxant aquest, aquest procés que diríem el procés de la independència i és molt emocionant el que està passant aquests últims anys. La gent realment s'expressa com vol, eh, tenen clar que, que, que volen ser un país lliure perquè no ha funcionat l'entesa amb, amb Espanya i, i no només de, des de que es va acabar la dictadura, sinó ja, ja fa 300 anys que ens, que ens van abolir les nostres llibertats. Per això aquest any és, és un any molt important, el 2014, i jo estic convençuda que el, el 9 de novembre votarem. I en el cas que no votem, sé que passarà alguna altra cosa, perquè, perquè, perquè ja en tenim prou i perquè volem ser el que som, un país lliure. The Assembly de Catalunya was created in 1971. This was a unified platform of Catalan political and cultural pressure groups based on four fundamental points. Freedom, amnesty, the statue of autonomy and coordination with democratic forces. Franco died in 1975, and with it, the collapse of the dictatorship. The return of democracy to Spain allowed Catalonia to recover its autonomous status in 1979 through the Statue of Autonomy. Additionally, the Language Normalization Act in 1983 has helped develop the statute to ensure the normal and official use of the Catalan language through all areas of communication, be that official, educational, or in the media. Every year, 10,000 works are published in Catalan, and the number of works published in other languages, then translated into Catalan, runs 10th in the world. In fact, on the 23rd of April every year, Catalonians celebrate La Diada de San Jordi, presenting loved ones with a rose and a book. The Catalan culture continues to grow stronger each year, this day is surrounded by love, culture, and myth. The legend of San Jordi begins with a dragon who loom over the village of Silene. The people of Silene would sacrifice a lamb and choose a virgin. Until one day, the princess was chosen. San Jordi is rumored to have slayed the dragon that poisoned the air of the village and freed the princess from her terrible destiny. This legend is seen throughout Catalonia with symbols and carvings of San Jordi slaying the dragon with the lance. Antonio Gaudí even depicted the famous dragon in his Casa Vallo. The roof resembles the spiny and scaly body of the dragon with the balconies representing the bones of its victims. You can also see amongst the day's celebration many Catalan flags wrapped around flowers and covering stall tables. Well, 20% of the population uh, consistently for the last 20 plus years have been in favour of independence, which is you know, it's a fifth of the population. It's a substantial 
amount of the population. Uh, that, as I said, has increased over the last four or five years. Also, in, um, in material I've been reading recently suggests that a lot of those people are Spaniards from other parts of um, Spain who are residents in Catalonia who believe that um, Catalonia should have, should have independence. It's rumoured that throughout Catalonia's oppression, the football club Barcelona has helped keep aspects of their culture alive by the fingertips. Fans and players spoke secretly in Catalan. Today the flag is seen everywhere in matches when Barcelona plays, and on the 17th minute and 14 seconds, a chant begins. It's the cry for independence, as the 11th of September 1714 is seen as the day that Catalonia began to lose its independence and identity. The club's motto, Mesque un club, is famous around the sporting world. This shows how important the club is to the Catalan culture. A ver, yo no soy una persona muy esportista, no me agrada el fútbol, pero creo que el esporte es una cosa y la política es un es una otra. Y hay gente que sí que fa mostres polítiques, a, a, no sé, en un partit, per exemple, sí que s'han fet senyeres al camp. Yo no estoy en contra, pero yo preferiría que el esport es siga una cosa que es el esport y la otra cosa es la, la política. Yo creo que ya está, está tan metido en la, en la cultura del Fútbol Club Barcelona, representa, es como una selección catalana que es muy difícil ya separarlo, pero yo creo que en, en mi opinión nunca se tendrían que haber mezclado porque eh, el fútbol es una cosa que está hecha para entretener, el fútbol, el baloncesto en general, el deporte, Mientras que la política es una cosa que nos, nos influye a todos y el, el deporte, si a ti no te gusta el fútbol, no, no tienes por qué inmiscuirte en ello. Pero eh, lo han mezclado de tal manera que se han creado fanatismos por ambos lados, tanto por el lado de los que son aficionados del Barcelona, que ya son eh, independentistas eh, 100%, como por el lado de los que son eh, del Real Madrid, los fanáticos que... Eh, son totalmente en contra de eso, sin, pero sin, ninguna, sin, sin ningún paliativo. Y, y al final lo que consigues es estandarizar a la gente y que por ser aficionado del Real Madrid, pues eres un facha y eres un antinacionalista y odias a los catalanes. Y yo no creo que eso, yo creo que nunca se debería haber mezclado y habría que intentar poner todos los medios posibles para dejar la vida política y el fútbol y el deporte en general separados, pero ya sería muy difícil hacerlo eso. One of the uh, one of the one of the questions that is most most raised sometimes facetiously is uh, uh, about the Barcelona Football Club and in which football league they will play because it is one of the most important um, football clubs in the world. They play in the Spanish league. There's certain prestige in playing that. And uh, they wouldn't have that prestige if they played strictly within a, um, a Catalan environment. There's some talk about it being like um, Monaco playing in the French League. You know, Monaco not being part of France, but playing in the French League. But who, who knows what would happen after independence, whether the Spanish Football League, if, if independence would happen, whether the Spanish Football League would allow them to, to, to play or whether they would punish them for their independence. Volunteers, campaign workers and members have organized many campaigns and activities throughout Catalonia. This includes the creation of the Catalan flag in tea light candles in the major square in the city of Vic on October 11th, 2012. Pues, eh, también el, el tema del referéndum está siendo muy polémico porque eh, pues el sentimiento que hay es que eh, las condiciones del referéndum, o sea, cómo se va a plantear la pregunta eh, son un, un poco demagogas y, y entonces la gente no está de acuerdo. Pero en mi opinión, a mí me gustaría así que hubiera un referéndum de una vez por todas y cerrar el debate y que se vea de verdad si, si, el, si el sentimiento general de los catalanes es de la independencia o no, porque no está todavía claro. The Asamblea Nacional Catalana on Catalonia's National Day in 2013 organize a 480-kilometer human chain with roughly 1.6 million people, known as the Catalan Way. This symbol of unity was formed in support of Catalan's independence from Spain and crossed 86 towns from the north of Catalonia to the south. And then the, the hands across in Catalonia last year. They're, they're the human chain, I think they're, they're, they're really important to um, 
they're really important to building community cohesion within Catalonia, showing the strength of the movement, but also I think as a public relations exercise to show the rest of the world, particularly the European Union, that they are committed to this. And the important thing is that these, uh, these activities are peaceful activities. They're, they're, there's no, nobody's advocating violence in any, there's not, sort of, there's not a, um, a push for a violent separation from, from, from Spain. They want to do it peacefully. On the 8th of June 2014, in a prominent display of a Catalan culture, a staggering 70 human towers were built worldwide to claim the Catalans' right to self-determination. The towers are a symbol of the united front and solidarity amongst Catalan society. Yo creo que el que es pretén es internacionalizar una mica el proceso, que la gente sàpiga el que está pasando a Cataluña, que están en un proceso, que no saben si habrá referéndum o no al, al novembre, y el que volen es que la gente de otros países coneguen la situación y el que está pasando. Por ejemplo, a Australia ha habido algunos esdeveniments, pero toda Europa, a los Estados Unidos... ¿Puedes darme tu opinión sobre la lucha por la independencia? Eh, bueno, yo creo que eh, el lado catalán está muy eh, mal influenciado por un, un pasado que, en el que les han enseñado cosas que realmente no, era, no, no sucedieron así. Y entonces, eh, el, desde el lado no catalán, se le intenta convencer de que, de que eso no es la realidad. Y al final yo creo que se, se centran tanto en, su, en, sus, en sus convicciones, sean o no verdaderas, que eh, la, 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 la discusión es muy difícil y, y se hace muy complicado el, el debate y está muy politizado y muy, hay muchos intereses económicos al final que hacen todo muy complicado. Eh, pues a mí me da pena porque es verdad que eh, se está creando bastante tensión alrededor del tema. Y, y yo creo que, pues, como ya he dicho, los dos, las dos partes tienen mucho que perder. Incluso yo diría que más Cataluña, porque ya, como han dicho eh, muchos eh, presidentes de grandes empresas catalanas que no podrían eh, mantener eh, sus empresas en Cataluña, sino que de, deberían trasladarlas a España. Y, pero también eh, España perdería muchísimo porque Cataluña es sin duda alguna una, una región eh, muy dinámica, tanto económicamente como culturalmente, en, en España. Yo creo que estigmo a favor uh, del referéndum. Yo creo que si la gente la necesita de saber el que opina en los catalanes, yo creo que se habría de hacer el referéndum. Es una cosa democrática y, y votar eh, es gratis. ¿no? Mucha gente dice que, que el referéndum es ilegal porque no es constitucional, pero las leyes eh, al llarg de la historia van cambiando y van adaptándose a, nou, a nuevos contextos y nuevas situaciones. Llavors, si ahora no es constitucional, no veis por qué la ley no, no puede cambiarse. Y al cabo a la fe, yo creo que es tracta sobre todo de un tema de voluntad política. Si el gobierno español no va a cambiar las leyes, Historically, Catalonia was separate to the um, rest of Spain. It obviously has very strong historical and cultural links with, with Spain. Um, I, I strongly believe that if, um, in a democracy, if, if there is a substantial portion of the population that uh, feel that they would be better off independent, I think they should have the right to, um, to attempt that. Or at least vote on it. Catalan is a united culture that's been utterly repressed, yet they continue to fight towards independence. Thank you for watching V Discovery. I am Jessica Yon. See you next time.